It's a new year and a new start. Time to put aside all of your old frustrations, all of your old habits that aren't helping you achieve your dreams, all of your doubts about yourself and your abilities, and make this year the year you succeed. Whether last year was good or bad for you, this year is going to be even better for your budding digital art business. How? I'll show you. Coming right up. Welcome to Riggin' Draws. I'm Riggin. Um, obviously. And if you're an artist or if you simply love everything creative, don't miss a single video by clicking the subscribe button and ringing the bell. One of my favorite books of all time is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. The guy has some fantastic advice about setting priorities and regaining control of your life. I very much recommend his works. I started thinking about this book, however, and started to specifically apply it to the process of growing a digital art business. These are my findings. Be proactive. My children keep telling me, when I grow up, I'm gonna blank. My husband and I respond by telling them, don't wait until you're grown up, do it right now. It's so much fun to see the little cogs turn as the next obvious question pops up in their multiple brains. How? They come up to us later with a plan in place and start putting it into motion. If they complain about any of the steps put into place, we ask them, so how are you going to change it? You see it all the time on social media. People complain about not getting enough commission orders, they complain about not being hired for a company, they complain that they can't go to art school or that they would be rejected for this, that, and the other. Everyone is so focused on what they can't do that they miss out on all the things that they can do. As creatives, we are so prone to depression and anxiety, and it's ridiculous. It literally becomes a deadly health hazard. It's so tempting to rant and vent online. I get it. I've done it. However, what you focus on grows. I've experienced this, both how focusing on the not so great and even downright terrible parts of life can spiral you into an inactive puddle of tears and regrets, as well as how consistently noticing, naming, and focusing on all the good parts of life, no matter how small and insignificant they might seem, can bring you out of those puddles and back into your true self. Being proactive is hard. It's a challenge. I will not deny that. It takes discipline to break out of the habits of beating yourself up and only focusing on the negative, but it's possible. At the end of every day, or even at the start of it, write five things you are thankful for and five things you can change. Then take action. Change them. Don't just sit there and beat yourself up. If you catch yourself beating yourself up, switch to making a plan for the upcoming day and stick to the plan. At the end of the day, congratulate yourself on the progress you made, even if it was small, and move forward. Take the opportunities that scare you. Step outside of your comfort zone. Don't just talk about it. Do it. Begin with the end in mind. I put this into one of my past videos about how to find your art style, and it seemed to garner a lot of attention. So I'm going to go a little further into depth. We don't usually just get in a car and drive randomly until we run out of gas. We don't usually go to an airport and select a plane at random. It sounds like a fantasy, sure, but in reality, these things take planning. It's the same way with your digital art business. Begin with the end in mind. Why are you drawing? Why do you want to start an art business? Why do you want to draw a certain way? For myself, I wanted to help my family get out of debt and be able to contribute financially to good recreational activities that would help our family grow closer together as well as provide adventure for our kids as well as pursuing a few dreams of my own and be able to give back to the community I love. What is your end goal for your art business? Do you want to improve your skills? Do you want to build your confidence? Do you want to become your own boss and set your own schedule? Do you want to help your family or loved ones? Write down or even draw what this will look like to you in the next five years. Go into crazy amounts of detail and be specific. I didn't just say, I want to have horses. Instead, I said, I want to adopt a draft cross and a Hanoverian mare as well as rescue and retrain an off-the-track thoroughbred. See? Specific. It hasn't happened yet, but it's getting there. Then you set a time limit and work backwards. How soon do you want to do this? What is it going to take to get there? Map it out. Put your visual goal in a prominent place you look at every day and don't just read or admire it. Feel it. Imagine it taking place right now. Every detail. How does it make you feel? How thankful are you that this has happened? Are you crying tears of joy? Are you jumping up and down screaming? Are you holding someone close? Lock in that feeling and don't let anything take it away from you. Not even yourself, especially not yourself. 
It'll be a battle, but it'll be worth it. Put first things first. No matter how hard you try, when you go on a hike, you can't start from step 100. You have to start at step one and go from there. It's also not recommended that you go on a hike and not take water, snacks, and any kind of emergency supplies with you. Completing the hike doesn't mean anything if you don't have the strength to get back again. I used to admire people who said they worked well into the night and early into the morning to bring their businesses to life, without much sleep. In college, I strove to be that hard-working student who got so caught up in work that she didn't eat or drink anything for days. Don't do that. I lost weight that I could not afford to lose and became borderline anorexic. Sleep deprivation led to more panic attacks and depressive episodes. The quality of my work sunk dramatically. You must put first things first. Take breaks, stretch your wrists, stand up and walk around every 30 minutes. Take daily walks and exercise regularly. Relax with friends and family. Eat. And I don't mean those snacks that you brought to your desk either. Yeah, I see those. Ditch the snacks, eat your food away from your desk. Drink half your body weight in ounces of water every day. I uh, cheated when I started to do this and put in very small amounts of crystal light to help and gradually cut back until it became easy to just drink the water. If you're short on time, make a little extra dinner to save it for lunch the next day. Your health comes first, then your most important relationships and responsibilities, then work, then play. Yes. Play is important, too. Relax. Have fun when everything's done. I end work at 4.30 p.m., clean up, make dinner, and then my family and I watch a movie together or play a board game. Put first things first. You'll be so much happier and much more productive and make much more progress. Think win-win. When selling your art online, it's so easy to take one of two extreme roads. The first and most common that I've seen is to take deals that benefit the client or commissioner but not yourself. The second, maybe less seen, but definitely still out there, is creating deals that benefit you, but leave your clients feeling less than enthusiastic or even ripped off. You're going to want to search for that ideal balance here. A third way that ensures both you and your client win. I'm not talking about a compromise either. In a compromise, no one is happy. I'm talking about finding a way where both parties are absolutely ecstatic about working together. For some, this means raising prices and finding new clients. For others, it's learning when and how to say no. I have another video on this that you may use if you're struggling. For yet others, it's learning to listen or to have a positive kill them with kindness attitude. Find a way where your work is appreciated for what it's worth and where you enjoy what you're doing. The more you show that you aren't going to back down either for yourself or your commissioners, the more business is going to blossom because people will find your passion and enthusiasm contagious. They will trust you to know what they want and will feel extra excited because you are excited too. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Listening, sincere, authentic listening and caring about what the other has to say is vital to building a loyal base of fans and clientele. Feeling understood is such an integral human need that we can get lost in trying to communicate our ideas and forget that others are feeling misunderstood as well. As an artist, especially one who may have low self-esteem or may be new to the commission scene, it's easy to want to focus on being clear that you expect to be paid fairly for your work. The thing is, people are more ready to listen to you when you have shown that you are ready to listen to them. Let me be clear here. I'm using the term listen here, not hear. Hearing someone means you recognize what they say, but mostly you're just waiting for them to stop talking so that you can provide your input. Listening means that you are taking into account what the other is saying, repeating back to them key points of their communication, and applying their input into your decisions. I have fallen into the just hearing trap so many times. For example, as I was playing a Dungeons & Dragons session with my Questrians group, uh, go check us out on the Watchful Ponies Twitch channel, it's awesome, I wasn't listening to the group, just waiting for my turn in combat, and had my pump up monk attack an already dead baddie. My group teased me about it and we moved on, but it could have been much worse had it been that I was not focused on a client. Communicate with those with whom you work. Understand what they want and what feel they're going for. Understand them first, then make your point of view known. 
Ask questions, get references, collect as much information as you can, and then show them the process. The more the artist and client collaborate, the better the art is going to become and the more likely your client will be to recommend you to their friends. Synergize. There seems to be a little bit of a competition going on between artists and commissioners lately. Artists get a bad client and they think all clients are enemies to be brought to heel. Commissioners hire a bad artist and they become paranoid that they will be taken advantage of. How do we beat this? By opening up communications, unifying. Have a set of rules stated in a prominent place. Uh, no, your DeviantArt journal is not a prominent place. You need a website, a pinned tweet, something that is very much unmissable. You can also use collaborative apps like Trello, Monday.com, or even just a Google Sheet to help be more transparent to your customers. Show them your progress. Just be wary and only upload works in progress that have watermarks and branding on them to prevent theft. Be clear on your expectations and understand the expectations of your clients. Bounce ideas off of each other. Don't just do the art and drop the commissioner. Get to know them. Value their input. Work together to create something even better than it would have been if it was simply one and done. The more you break the artist versus commissioner's cycle, the more business is going to blossom and the more you're going to be very satisfied with your work. Sharpen the saw. This one should be obvious, but it isn't always. Especially in the digital art world, techniques and tools are constantly changing. Your abilities should always be improving along with them. Take at least one day a week to set aside all commissions and all other work to take stock of your methods and habits. Throw away what doesn't work. Build on what does. Learn from other artists. Recreate your style. Do some basic studies. Watch some speed paints. Draw what you want to draw. Get feedback from your current followers or people whose opinions you value. You need to take time to sharpen the saw and hone your craft. Nurture your love for art or it'll simply breed resentment. Budget out future costs. How long is the lifespan for your current pen display? Are one of your copics running out of ink? Are your prices sufficiently covering time and resources? The faster you improve, the more you're going to be in demand. People love watching a rising star and you can give them that opportunity by constantly perfecting your craft. How are you growing your art business this year? What are your goals and resolutions? Tell me in the comments below. This video is brought to you for free by my incredible patrons, including the epically generous Shepard Shield, Thundernote the Change Pony, Ram Digga Jam, Gigabit the Saved Gamer, D Birch, Sharp Wit, Rocky Harmony, and Raven Lead Moon. Join them today by clicking the link in the description below. My love to you all, and I will see you next Friday. Bye!